Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles this morning as that we can start to go on with the message even this morning of how that Mary meets Gabriel. You know, we had talked about Zacharias and his encounter with Gabriel, but yet Mary meets Gabriel. But this morning we're going to start in Isaiah and chapter 7 as I begin the reading of the Word of God. Verse 10. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call him his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. For therefore, or for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you this morning, let us hear from your word and let us have revelation of heart, knowing that you have brought these prophecies to pass through Christ. And Father, as we come to you this morning, we open that we'll have a hope that we'll have an open mind and an open heart to be able to receive your word today, that this Christmas might be something even more special because we became closer to you in our relationship. And Father, we thank you for the gift that you have given us, your Son, Jesus Christ, for it is in his name that we pray, amen. You know, sometimes I've made the comment before, watch what you ask for, you just might get it. And you know, more times than not, people ask for things, and then after that they get it, they wonder why they even ask. But you know, we need to know that God wants us to come to Him and to get our answers. In verse 14 of that chapter, it says, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. You see, this wasn't a sign from somewhere else. This was a sign from God Himself. It was God that was going to do something miraculous. He says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And we know that the word Emmanuel means God with us. So in the Old Testament, we see the prophecies that are there that even before the virgin girl was conceived, the prophecies went forth many years ahead of that. One of the things in that verse 16, and it says before, for, um, before the child shall know to refuse evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Now Israel at that was split into two. There was the king, northern kingdom and there was the southern kingdom. There was Israel and there was Judah. But in Israel, the northern kingdom, its kingdom lasted until 722 B.C. 722 years before Christ was whenever that the last king of Israel was there. And in Judah, one thing I will say about Israel even at that was that there was really no good kings in Israel in the northern kingdom. They were all bad. They were all evil. And they did things outside of the will of God. But in Judah, there were kings and they lasted until 586 B.C before Christ. They went on that much longer, but as you see even in this portion of Scripture to where it says, and both kings you know, would be done away with at that. So now, turn with me if you would to Luke in chapter 1 in your New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke chapter 1. As if we turn there and we begin to see picking back up in verse 26 because this is where the story of Mary really kicks in. And it says in verse 26 of chapter 1 of Luke, and it says, In the sixth month the angel Gabriel 
was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Okay, I'm going to, for some of you that haven't been here the last couple of weeks maybe, we found out that Zacharias and Elizabeth, who were barren, Elizabeth was barren, she was not able to conceive, but yet Gabriel, the angel that stood in the presence of God Almighty, was sent to Zacharias to tell him that his wife was going to conceive and she was going to have a son and it was going to be the prophet of the Most High. And you see, that was John the Baptist. And so it was in the sixth month, first sixth month at that. And in the sixth month that the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named uh, Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. Now this is important that we see here that Joseph, which would have been the stepfather of Jesus, he came from the house of David, but also in the lineage, Mary herself was from the house of David, and through that bloodline that came down, that was where the Christ child was to be born. Now this is all prophecy from the Old Testament because David, through his lineage, was where that the Messiah was going to come and that they were going to look for. But you see, even back in the Old Testament to where that it said, God said that He was going to give a sign that a virgin, it was Himself that was going to give the sign that a virgin would conceive and bring forth a child that would be called Emmanuel. And here we see this Mary, that she was going to birth forth this child. Verse 28, and it says, And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now when the angel comes, and the angel says that she was highly favored. Now God is no respecter of persons. We need to know that and understand that. But when it said she was highly favored in the book of Hebrews, we know that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So apparently, she was diligently seeking God. She was living in every aspect, totally submitted to the Lord and to the Lord's will because she was highly favored. Are you highly favored of God? You need to know that you are highly favored of God. Are you living in a way that you are honoring God in such a way? That it is why our young children today need to know that it is still important in God's eyes to remain pure, to remain holy before Him. You'll hear that from this pulpit. Amen? Now that doesn't mean that our young kids may all walk in those ways. There are children who go off and go astray and into other paths. God is calling them back to purity in Him, but God's perfect will and perfect plan for your life is to wait until you are married to have those relations in which Joseph and Mary had did. Joseph and Mary, it says here, they, they were espoused to be married. Under Jewish law, they hadn't even been together to consecrate, consecrate their marriage at that point, but yet they were still committed to one another through law, even at that, there would have had to have been a writing of a bill of divorce at that point. You need to know that. Mary here, she is seeing this angel who is telling her that she is highly favored of the Lord and blessed are thou among women. You know, she was blessed of God in this. And when she saw him, she was tr uh, troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Now the angel's already given her good words, but you know, we've talked about this before, but if an angel becomes in your presence, you're probably going to wonder why that angel is there as well. Oh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Because you know, when you think about Balaam, there was an angel in that, and he was ready to kill him because God had sent for that to happen. So when angels come, you maybe we better be aware. But you know, ultimately, we should be humbled before the Lord because we are in a supernatural state at that point from a supernatural being getting ready to deliver us a message of what we need to hear or understand. But we need to use discernment in what that the angel is bringing to us as well that it line up with the Word of God. Because there are things that are out there that will try to deceive you and make you think that it's from the Lord when in all reality it's the devil that's trying to deceive you. 
But everything that Gabriel was saying to her was prophecy that was from the Old Testament, even picking back up there in verse 30, and it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Do you notice that the angel spoke to her on a personal level by calling her by name? Do you know that God knows you by name? Yes, God knows us by name. He's never lost anything. You know, when we have a funeral service, oftentimes I'll tell people, God, God has never lost anything. We may have lost someone from this life, but God still knows where they are at and where they are at with Him or in Him. That's important because God is a personal God. He loved us so much. And that's something that we need to get across is that people need to know that God loves them wherever that they're at. He may want them to repent from their sin. He may want them to get some things out of their life to where that He can speak to them on a deeper level. But God loved them right where they were at. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen? Amen? Christ died for us. And as we see here, she was highly favored with God. Verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, which means Savior, Deliverer. Oh, I heard something else. <laughs> Jesus. Why do you think that the power in the name of Jesus, even the demons tremble at his name because there is power and authority when you use the name of Jesus and you know who Jesus is, you even have authority over the demons. Amen. I hadn't planned on going here, but I might as well this morning. Amen. Because the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts, you see, they had heard about Jesus and they had heard about the power that He had to be able to cast out devils and even the disciples that went in His name and even Paul who was casting out devils, all Paul had to say in the name of Jesus, come out! And they came out! Why did they come out? Because of what Paul and who Paul was? No! Because of the authority that Paul had in Christ Jesus that they were commanded to come out and they came out. But you see the seven sons of Sceva, uh-oh, I want to tell you, we come and we adjure you in the name of Jesus in whom Paul preaches. Now there was just one guy in the house. I don't know how many demons were in him. But you know, they came, they were going to cast the devil out of this guy. And so as they were going to do that, they come and they say, we adjure you in the name of Jesus in whom Paul preaches, you know, to come out. And this is so funny. I mean, really, you have to find humor in the Scriptures because, you know, this man who was possessed by this evil spirit, he said, you know what? Jesus, I know him. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul, I know him. Because he knows Jesus. But who are you? And the scripture says that that man whipped them in the house, ripped off their clothes, and he sent them out naked shamefully. Now why was that? Because they didn't know the power or have the power of authority in the name of Jesus. So here when this angel is telling Mary that you are going to name him Jesus, that was going to be his name, but his name has meaning. It means Savior. It is consecrated to Deliverer as well. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. You see, Jesus is the Son of the living God who came from the bosom of the Father. Jesus was not a created being. He came from the bosom of the Father and at that, Jesus is the one that created all things and all things that were created were created by Him and for Him and without Him was not anything made. That's exciting. Amen? This was the plan of God, but He was the Son of the Most High. He's the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give Him the throne of His father David. 
David was the king of Israel. We know that David made mistakes. Oh, sure. He, you know why David made mistakes? Because David was human. Just like you and me. He was flesh and blood. But God had a plan even at that. Even through his mistakes, we find out that the, the Scriptures say that David was a man after God's own heart. Whenever that David sinned and God revealed his sin to him, he was quick to repent and turn and get his life right with God again. He had a relationship with the Lord. In fact, you look in the book of Psalms and you see many of the Psalms that were written by David and the compassion and the mercies that are new every morning. David knew and understood those things whenever that he spoke about those. And that's why here in the Scriptures to where it says, and he shall be given the throne of his father David. Now even at that, go back with me if you would to Psalms 110. I hadn't even planned on doing this, but we're going there this morning. Psalms 110. Because Jesus was asked at one time, you know, if David, you know, how did he call him Lord? Verse 1 of chapter 10. 110, verse 1, says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. This here was a prophecy that was even being given at that point about how that Jesus was going to be at his right hand, the right hand of the Most High, until that his enemies were made thy footstool. And that happened over in Matthew, it talks about Jesus said, if he be Lord, how can he call him Lord? And they didn't know how to answer this. The scribes and the Pharisees. So yet whenever the Jesus brought this up, it kind of shut him up. Because there are things that are in the scriptures that we don't see unless you have the spirit of God and understanding to be able to understand what he was speaking about. Moving on here in our message today. I'm going to read that verse 32. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Turn with me if you would to Jeremiah and chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm going to read verse 5 and 6 there. But I wanted to bring some of these things into play this morning into our scripture reference and reading and seeing how that these prophecies, even of what the angel was saying back over here in Luke, was still yet to come to pass, but it was prophesied years before. Now there again in Jeremiah chapter 23 Jeremiah starts off in verse 1, he says, But woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. As this is, I'm kind of setting the stage here to be able to read verse 5 and 6. But as we're setting the stage, God had a plan of the shepherd that he was going to bring on to the scene. In verse 5 it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And in his day Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord of Righteousness. That is speaking of Jesus. That is speaking of the true shepherd. I'm just an under-shepherd. He is the head shepherd in what shall come and rule his people. But even at that, the prophecies that were there of how that, that root of David would come and that offspring of David with that branch, as it says here, he shall rule and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. He is the king of righteousness as well. This is speaking of Jesus. Go back over there to Luke in chapter 1 now if you would. Luke in chapter 1, picking back up where we left off. But I thought that might be something interesting for some of you who kind of follow the scriptures in this. Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, 
How shall this be, saying, I know not a man? You see, natural things go by natural means. But you have to understand, this was something that was going to place, take place supernaturally because she had never known a man, so in her mind, she was like, how's this going to work? I don't understand. Because you see, in the natural, she would have had to have known a man to pass that seed on, but the seed that was passed on to her was not of natural means because God Himself said, I'm going to send a sign. You know, God can still do the miraculous. We believe that here at the Lake Viking Church. At least your pastor believes that, that the supernatural can still happen. That's why that I try to operate in humbleness and humility because there are things that are going on behind the scenes all around that I may not see the whole picture, but yet if I understand through humbleness and humility that there are things that are going on that God is trying to take place, then I'm okay with that. God can make the move. Allow Him to move in your life in that capacity. But she was just simply questioning. She was questioning, you know, how's this going to work? I don't understand this. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Woo! The Son of God. The Son of the living God. That's what this child is going to be called. But you see, He's not only the Son of God, He's also the Son of Man because He was born in the flesh through Mary. But you see, Joseph was not Jesus' father. God the Father was His Father. I heard a song this morning, in my mother's side, I'm this. But on my father's side, I'm that. Amen. If you've never heard that song, oh, you've got to hear it. Because it's good. And it's more of a Christmas song as well. But you know, the thing is, is in the natural, we are born into sin. I don't care how good of a person you think you are. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I've never sinned. I've literally seen people that thought, no, I've been good all my life. I've never sinned. Oh, okay. Well, let's just go with that then. Okay. You may have never sinned, but you were born into sin and you are still guilty of sin. For by one man's sin are we all guilty, but by one man's righteousness are we all made righteous. Man, that's good news. Somebody ought to get excited about that. You see, because whether you think you're good or not, we're not good enough in God's eyes. Not one spot, not one blemish can be there. That's why that there was continual sacrifice that was taking place because it was only a shadow of the things that were to come. A shadow of things that were to come from the Old Testament, giving us representation when Christ was on that cross and His blood was shed, this was sufficient because He was the spotless Lamb of God. When John the Baptist saw Him coming and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world because He was without spot and without blemish. He was perfect. He was pure because His heavenly Father was pure and He walked in that purity even as we read in the Old Testament earlier in Isaiah of the what He was fed so He would know to refuse that which was evil and go for that that which was good. Oh, to God that we might live that way. And when we come to Him, when we come to Christ, that we might live like Him, for as He was, so ought we to be. Wow. I'm going to read that verse 35 again. I normally don't do this, but it's, man, it's just so good. And the angel answered and said unto the Holy Ghost, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. What do I see out of that? Shall overshadow thee. The Holy Spirit, the, the highest, is going to overshadow you, is going to protect you. Even through this whole process, God the Father was going to protect Mary through this process of her conception and through her birth and through what she went through to conceive even at that, God the Father was watching over her, making sure that she was going to be fine. 
Verse 36, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. Now, I, wanted, I thought about this, you know, as I was going through my studies. You know, we go to the doctor's office today to find out to have sonograms to see what type of little child that we're going to have. Is it a boy or is it a girl? Now we have all these little revealing parties, you know, where they do the different things. It's a boy or it's a girl. Guess what? This was the first one here that I saw because God knew already that Elizabeth had received and conceived a boy. Because God knew us in our mother's womb and we are fearfully and wonderfully made in His sight. So God knows who we are before we ever get here. i got to tell a funny story. Mary may kill me later. Yeah. Is that okay to just tell a little story? Yeah, sure. don't look at her. <laughs> Whenever Miranda, our oldest daughter, was born, we were both convinced that that child, we, we didn't have a sonogram, we didn't have any of that, you know, we just knew in our hearts that Miranda was going to be a little boy, and we were so happy, you know, we were going to have a little boy, and you know, whenever that baby came out, little Miranda came out, my mother-in-law was right there as well, and you know, whenever the child came out, you know, I just looked to Mary, and I glanced at her so lovingly, she had just had our first child together, and the doctor said, it's a girl! What? <laughs> Wait. And my mother-in-law said the look on our face was so precious. But you know what? Brenda has sure been a tomboy, I'll tell you what. I mean, she's able to whip boys and everything else when she was younger. So, but we are so blessed to have her. Amen. And her daughter is here today. Amen. My grandbaby's here. You know, I just have to go by the Spirit, okay? I had a dream the other morning. And in this dream, Ross was involved. But I think there's significance to this. In the dream, I was sharing with him, and I even called him last night to tell him this. I said, in this dream, it was just the other day. You were just little. You were so small. And parents and grandparents here this morning, hear what I'm saying. It was just the other day that he was a little one. Now he's a grown man. And he's such a good young man. But it was just the other day. And you know, the scriptures tell us that our life is but a vapor. It's here it's gone. And it's that fast. In eternity. But if we can remember, and I don't even know why I'm sharing that, but I know that there's a significance to it. For some of us to remember that our life is but a vapor because it's here and it was just a moment ago that we were raising our little ones that are adults now. We need to serve God all of the days of our life. Mary did not understand how this was going to happen. But the angel said, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Picking back up in verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You see, we look at life and we think life has to make sense. And it should, as life should make sense. But yet, in God's perspective, He can do the miraculous. He can cause water to come from a rock. He can cause manna to fall out in the middle of a desert to feed His children. He can cause cubbies of quail to come down and all you got to do is go out and catch them. Whenever that there was no food and there was no water, God was able to do the miraculous because what is impossible with man is possible with God. Turn with me if you would to Mark and chapter 10. Mark and chapter 10. I'm just going to read verse 26 and 27.
Mark chapter 10, verse 26 and 27. Jesus had been telling them how impossible almost that it was. It was easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it was for a rich man to enter into heaven who trusted in those riches. But verse 26, the disciples were there and it says, and they astonished, they were astonished out of, me out of measure saying amongst themselves, who then can be saved? And Jesus looked upon them and saith, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God nothing is impossible can you grasp that in your mind today that the things that you may think are impossible? You have unsaved loved ones and you may think it is impossible for them to get saved. Get on your knees and begin to pray for their salvation. Get on your knees and begin to pray that God will make a move in their life. That God will bring them back to a place of right standing with Him for them. Anybody hearing me this morning? because nothing shall be impossible with God. I have waited for many years to see my prayers answered and as they begin to unfold just this year, I was able to baptize my oldest child at 36 years old who I've prayed for for years. It didn't happen overnight and it may not happen overnight with you, but pray and believe and allow God to do a work. Verse 38 of Luke in chapter 1 says, And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Do you know what she just said? I accept everything that you're telling me. I believe what you are telling me. So be it unto the handmaiden of the Lord. And she accepted what needed to be done. But you know, wow. Okay, Mary just accepted this from the angel and that God was going to do it. But yet, oh wait a minute. Man, now we've really got a dilemma. Whew, man, Joseph. How am I going to get Joseph to understand what God has shared with me? Because you know, this would have been a shameful thing in the early time of the this time of life for them, and especially as being a good Jewish girl who trusted God to be found pregnant, what is her espoused husband going to think? What is Joseph going to think now? I'm He's going to think I cheated on him. Isn't that what you would have thought? Yeah, we would all raise our hand. <laughs> yeah, you're telling me one thing. This doesn't make sense. But you know what? God doesn't leave Joseph even hanging out in the nowhere land. Because Joseph was a good man too. Turn with me to Matthew in chapter 1, would you? Matthew in chapter 1. Picking up in verse 18 of that chapter. You know, my heart goes out to Joseph even in this. Because there had to come a point to where he accepted this as well. Verse 18 of chapter 1 of Matthew says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise... When as his, uh, his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. It says before that they came together, they had not yet had any type of intimate or sexual relationship to where that, that could have even have been a possibility. You see, there's lots of people who don't believe in the virgin birth. That's because they don't believe God. I believe God. I believe His Word. And I see that through His miraculous moving into the natural, supernatural things happen. So as that she was found conceived of the Holy Ghost, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. He was a good man. Joseph was a good man. He was the type of man that any good man and not willing to make her a public ex uh, example, was mindful to put her away privately. Now when it says there that he was not wanting to public make a public example of her, he could have by the law probably have had her stoned because she was found unfaithful to him, but he was such a good man. He didn't want to do that. He was going to do this privately 
to where that it would not make a public spectacle of her or her family and be found in shame. So he was going to try to do this to where that there was still a respectful atmosphere about it. In verse 20 it says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. There's that angel of the Lord appearing again to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son David, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. The angel of the Lord began to deliver a message that this child's name is going to be Jesus. Isn't that what the angel Gabriel told Mary? You're going to call this child Jesus. I still think about that with Zacharias and how that, you know, some of the cousins and the family were wanting, oh, well, we should call him Zacharias. No, his name's going to be called John. And whenever Zacharias acknowledged his name, because that's the name that the angel had said that he was going to have, you know what? When God tells you something, you better stick by it. Amen. Don't be going trying to change God's word or God's will, just go with it. You know, we need to go with it a little bit more and get ourselves to where that we are in God's submission even in this here. And that's what Joseph had to do was bring himself into submission to the will of God. And as we find out here in verse 22, and it says, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's where we started out this morning in Isaiah and chapter 7, and how that, look how everything has came full circle even towards the end of my message this morning, because the angel is telling Joseph, look, this here is what it is about. This here is what the prophecy was about the virgin that shall bring forth a child and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now we find out that's God with us. And in verse 24, then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took him unto him his wife. Joseph went right ahead and he took Mary as his wife to be right beside him, even though that she was pregnant with someone else's child, albeit it was a child of the Father. Amen. Amen. This was a great honor for them to be raised. The only other Scripture that we have in the New Testament to where that Joseph is mentioned about the father was whenever that the, he was at, Jesus was at the age of 12 years old and he was in the temple and as he was in the temple, they went off a couple days journey getting ready to go home. And that's when they finally realized, we don't even have Jesus with well, Wait a minute, where's Jesus at? They looked for him all through the family because they traveled in a van for safety and traveled in a, not a van, in a band, you know, going together. And it's that they couldn't find Jesus. So they had to go back to Jerusalem where that they were at. Guess where they found They found him in church. Oh, to God, that we find more kids in church with questions. Amen? Amen. And they went in and, they, and Mary's like, Son, what have you done to your father and I? Don't you know that we've been concerned about you? That's where Joseph really is mentioned even right there. Don't you know your father and I have been concerned? Where have you been? Well, I've been over here doing it. No, he says, Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Whoa. This little boy's got some spunk because he knew at the age of 12 years old who his father truly was. God the Father. Whenever that you see that and you see how that he was instructed even in that, the questions that he was asking of the teachers, the answers that he was giving to them, there was something special about Jesus in his knowledge and understanding and being able to know the Word of God the way that He did. Finishing up in verse 25, as Marilyn comes to the piano this morning. 
and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. He called his name Jesus. But Joseph did not know her in an intimate way until after that Jesus was born. I, I could go on more yet, but I'm not even going to. It's time I quit. Some of you are saying, oh no, go on. Some of you are saying, please quit. <laughs> I hope I've stimulated your heart. Because as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, whether or not it was on December 25th, really makes no difference. But what does make a difference is that we acknowledge the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because He just wasn't born in this world to live. He was born into this world to die. To die for you. To die for me. That we might have eternal life. When He was on the cross, you were on His mind. When He was on the cross and He said those words, it is finished. He had accomplished His goal. He had accomplished His mission. Being born in this world to die for you and I. If you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and personal Savior, will you take this time today to invite Him into your life? To invite Him into your heart because He loves you. And He cares for you. And if you feel Him tugging at your heartstrings today, let it be the power of the Holy Spirit that draws you to Himself because of His love that is everlasting in Jesus' name. No. Oh. 